What's going on guys? So we just got back from Cochrane and as usual me and Mike had planned to do lots of stuff while we were in Cochrane But we get there and we get put to work and we don't end up ever finding the time So Mike wanted to do some drone work that didn't happen I wanted to do a video showing you guys all the upgrades to the trailer that didn't happen So that's what I'm gonna do today now that I'm back in Toronto I've got a couple days here before I head back to school so I just wanted to highlight all the upgrades I had done to our 2023 uh, Legend Explorer Snow Trailer. So as I mentioned in the previous video where we got the trailer, I was taking it to a buddy of ours, Thomas Rowell, who does um, a lot of work uh, on trailers. And he's, in my opinion, the trailer magician. So let's just highlight what he did. So first of all, the lights that you see on in here are all 12 volt lights that came with the trailer, except for these two strips we added. Now, these lights were originally only wired up to the truck, so when the truck wasn't connected, you didn't have lights in the trailer. So those have now been wired into a battery that's encased up here. I just have to take off these four screws to access it. So that battery's up here that powers all these lights. Then further, this 110 volt bar light that came with the trailer, that was only powered through the other end of this uh, 110 volt outside, so you have to plug it in basically to the house to get light there. So now we have an inverter it's right over here. So this inverter is powered right here. So I turn this on. It's going to tell me the voltage on my battery. And also the watts that's being pulled from it. So when I turn the light on, it's going to say about 10 watts. Now the light's on. So this is all powered from this battery. Even cooler than that, um, these outlets have now been rerouted. So when I plug in here, I'm getting power from that battery. And when I plug in outside over here, that is actually connected directly to a tender over there. I'll show you, can't really see, but there's a tender that's plugged in here and that charges the battery. So when I plug in the trailer from the outside, I'm actually charging the battery in here, which is great. A couple other things he added. So this uh, shelf we got made, uh, all stamped aluminum, kind of similar to uh, the trim on the roof of the trailer. That's why we matched it that way. It's also divided into four sections. I wanted to do that so we could separate things. So we have oil in the first section, boots, some helmets, some more helmets and some extra stuff uh, on the first section over there. Now on top of that, we added a diesel heater. So Thomas is actually like so gifted in how he does this stuff. So he basically replaced the wall here with um, the stamped uh, aluminum just so that any heat being produced by the diesel heater doesn't touch anything wood or um, the wall panels so we replaced that all with stamped aluminum made a little shelf here for the diesel heater the exhaust and the intake of the diesel heater goes right out the floor and he encased it all in the same stamped aluminum now it's actually perfect I didn't want to lose any floor space but I'm not really because the skis are guided here so this is really dead space now this battery just came with the trailer, that really runs the trailer brakes. Now this shelving unit, so this is really the only storage that came with the trailer when we bought it. Um, usually people, people would put helmets in there, but knowing that I was getting this installed, uh, I asked Thomas to separate it. So we added four separations in here, that way I can store all my tools and stuff like that. And I just bought these bins from Dollarama and organized my tools my zip ties, my cleaning supplies, basically everything is just up there organized and I know exactly where everything is. Now on top of that, we wanted some hanging space. So I bought these actually on Amazon and Thomas installed them. And super easy, these clips basically slide along and they come right off depending on what you wanna use and then they snap back on. So right now I have my work uh, pants. These are my Polar Bear Riders volunteer pants because they were ripped last year. Um, some muffs extra super clamps, some belts over there. And then, then we also had another section of um, the rack that we put back here. And that's just holding right now a link bag, the broom, and um, the extensions for the hang guards for my Skidoo Gen 4. So that's basically what we did to this trailer. On top of that, we installed roof vents. These are a different design to what I've been seeing. So these you actually just twist and that pops open. So we added two of those because for a trailer this size with four or two to four uh, two strokes in here, you need as much ventilation as you can get. So we have two of those vents and I'll show you guys exactly what that looks like from the outside. So what those are, they actually, it's a company that makes covers for the vents. That way you can keep the vents 
open uh, when it's raining and you won't actually get any moisture inside because the whole thing is covered or you won't get any like rain dripping inside because the vent is facing backwards. So that was something cool that I saw that I added. On top of that, Thomas uh, designed PVC piping that runs all the way from the diesel heater all the way down here and we added holes in it so when the diesel heater is on it uh, pushes heat out of this. I will say after testing it in Cochrane I think with the size of the trailer because it's not insulated I'll, I'll likely need uh, another heater in this trailer just because of its size and the fact that the walls aren't insulated but it does make it very comfortable to, to be in here like I was it was negative uh, about negative 20 when I was in Cochrane one night and in here it was about negative three so it wasn't enough to melt stuff just because of the size and again because there's no insulation but it was enough that I could be in here and comfortable in a sweater and just tinkering on the sleds on top of that this wasn't added by Thomas but I absolutely love um, the L track on the floor so I can move my super clamps wherever I want uh, and that's about it he wired all of the inside lights as well as the ramp lights to the battery at the front here so everything can be run without the trailer and those are the upgrades that we had done. As you notice, uh, my XRS is missing. Mike has taken it. He's going to do some riding with it. I want to mileage that sled out. That's the plan so I can get a new motor under warranty from BRP. Because uh, as, as most of you know, BRP sleds now only come with two years of warranty. So this is my second year. So Mike's going to ride the sled for a bit. And that's really my overview on the trailer. There's one other thing that I want to show you guys. It's pretty cool. This is a Mike idea that Mike has done in all his trailers and very few guys do it actually. So it's basically an RV lock. So you add an RV lock to the side door that has a passcode. And don't worry if the batteries die, you still have keys so you can manually unlock it. But this is another great option to have on the trailer. That way you don't always have to be looking for your keys when you want to get in here. And that's about it. The last thing was this flap here. Uh, originally it opened up and down and it didn't actually have a spring on it that was super tight so it was like flapping up and down in the wind uh, when I was driving so Thomas took that out and replaced it by this and as I mentioned we just plug in there and that actually charges the battery in the trailer so those are all the upgrades that we've had done on this legend 23 foot snow explorer trailer uh, if you need any work done to your trailers and you're local to like the GTA area Thomas is um, Pretty close to Newmarket, Schaumburg area, and he does awesome work, as you can see. I trust him with all my trailers. If you're looking for any work, definitely check him out. I'll throw his number here in the video. And that's about it. I'm off to New York in a couple days. Mike will be pretty active all season on the sled. I'll try to come as much as I can. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Sled Addicts YouTube channel, where we release content on everything snowmobiling, also, hit that bell icon so you can be updated every time we release new videos.